Well, great. I, I want to start with a specific warning that is, this is a, a work in progress model. We have a version, but we didn't apply it yet in a specific uh, paper. And we also open to to work on them in the next month and also to improve some of the of the characteristics uh, of the model. So the idea here is uh, I, what I was saying is that if I have uh, to summary chance in a, in a sentence is the first sentence that you have there. No, it's chance is a multi-regional, multi-sectoral general equilibrium model that includes large information, in this case, on, on European households. So this disaggregation information of European households allow us to develop more uh, in deep distributional impact. That is something that is not uh, very often in, in city models. So the approach that we follow in chance it's a similar approach that we have uh, followed for uh, previously in other research that we have done at the national level. So the example that I show there uh, is, uh, for example, for the case of uh, Spain or for also for the case of the of the U.S., where we also use some CG models to also to integrate uh, household data and be able to develop distributional analysis. So the main philosophy of this methodology that is applied in science is try to uh, is, is, is trying to solve one of the main limitations that we found normally in macroeconomic models, like in our case in, in CG models. So CG models and also many of the macroeconomic tools that you use uh, that you use they are great tools because they are able to analyze the economy as a whole. In a case of a multi-regional multi. Uh, uh, multi-sectoral CG model like like chance, uh, you can able you are able to have several regions, several sectors, to have also the mission from these sectors, the mission from those countries, and have all that information, which is super useful, and and, and that allows you to analyze different parts uh, of emissions, uh, also analyze the economic impact, the efficiency, and macroeconomic perspective of the policies that you want to analyze. But at the same time, the bad side of this kind of methodology that we normally found is that uh, uh, in the best, normally they only have one representative household. Normally, if you have uh, a CD model, like the model that was presented be before, normally when you go to the, you have all these several sectors and regions, but then when you go to the, to the final demand, or you have just one representative household, or in the best of the cases, you have uh, 10 groups, 10 income groups. So on the other side, we have the micro models, the micro models, no? Micro models that are normally demand models or uh, which are uh, great because in some, uh, well, they are constructed using large amount of uh, individual data. And normally, if it's a, a micro uh, household model, it will take, uh, it will use uh, household data, and it also, it's also able the micro, the micro models are able to uh, to capture the behavior of the household. So they provide a more realistic picture of distribution and demand and income effects of the different uh, uh, citizens, or in this case, uh, households. The bad side of this kind of model, on the other side, is that they only focus on one side of the economy. In this case, the demand side, if it is a demand model. And it's also very difficult to evaluate macro policies as climate uh, as climate policies that are the uh, the main policies that we will analyze in the in the project. No, so the idea of uh, this approach that we use in chance is to try to combine both models and try to have a macro model in our case, as I say, a multi-regional, multi-sectoral uh, CG model, and at the same time feed that model with a micro model that captured the behavior of several households in the European Union in this case. So the methodology of chance or the main goal, as I say, is to include this information of, uh, in our case, the main goal that we have is to include the information of 2,000 households in a CG model. So for doing that, the main data sources that we use in terms of the household data is the household budget survey that gives us the expenditure information of all these uh, European households for the, well, not the 27, but for 26 in our case, as we will see later. The bad side of this data is that you only have the expenditure extraction, which is uh, happening in terms of the demand of the household. But the side of the income is not very well collect, uh, collected in household budget survey. So for that reason, 
we match this uh, data source with the uh, other household survey as the EU seal. That is the statistics on income and living conditions. So through the matching of these uh, two data sources, we are able to have finally these 2,000 households and to have all the economic, socioeconomic, the socioeconomic characteristics that are available in these uh, surveys and also the expenditure structure and the income structure that they have. So with that, we consult a micro model that we uh, combine with, the, as, I, as I said before, uh, we combine uh, with a multi-regional CG model. So therefore, finally, you have this uh, macro, micro model that allows you to also analyze social, the social impact of the policies that you uh, analyze. Not only the pitching side, the, the sectoral side, not only what is happening in terms of GDP and so on on the prices, but not also what is happening in terms, for example, of inequality, what are the distributional impacts uh, at a vertical level in terms of the income, but also what is happening at a so in different socioeconomic groups that uh, nowadays is more important. For example, what is happening with rural households in, in Germany or what is happening with uh, single mother households in, uh, in France. So that's the kind of information that we can produce and that the outcomes that we can have with this, pro uh, with this approach or also try to analyze what is happening in terms of the energy poverty indicators, how they change with the policy that we can introduce. So in this uh, slide, I show the, 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 that the main data sources for the, uh, for the micro, for the micro model, sorry, is the household budget survey and the SILK. In the case of the CG, we construct the CG with the last version of GTAP 10. We are also open to work with more updates uh, uh, input output tables, and this is the aggregation that we have done uh, using uh, GTAP. Most of you, I, I, I know that you already know that GTAP is a is the input up, is a word uh, input output table database. And the last one, the data for the last uh, the, the latest data for GTAP is uh, 2014, if I remember correctly. So this is the aggregation that we have done for the project uh, for this project for the uh, for this model. So that's the European countries that are available in the model right now, as you can see, the, the 27 uh, uh, European countries. And then we have aggregated the rest of the world. In the European countries, we have included all the household information except for Austria, because uh, right now we have not available the, the micro data, but in the future we are trying to also to solve that issue and to also have, have those, those households. And in the case of the rest of the world, it's aggregated because we don't have uh, yet information from at the household level for them. But in the future, again, we are open to, for example, to disaggregate some of the rest of the world. For example, U.S., that science, we have worked before on that path. And on the other side, in the right, you have the sectors and commodities that we aggregate. So we differentiate between primary and secondary fossil, uh, well, the fossil fuel sector. And or the energy sectors, and in other case the the other sectors. And also, as you can see, we have uh, the, the several final consumption items that are key for the distributional analysis, are for the demand analysis that we that we do uh, through all this information on the household level. So just to to finish and not to be. Um, uh, then you can ask me uh, things if, if you think that is necessary. So. This is some of the benefits that we have found, uh, not only in chance, but in other approaches that we have done before, of the benefits of this approach of uh, link um, micro data, household data with CG models. That is, we can develop in deep distributional analysis beyond this idea of this uh, 10 income groups, for example, income details. As I said before, you can see what is happening in other socioeconomic characteristics that maybe sometimes are even more important, what's happening, for example, with elderly people, also focus on inequality, that is not very, that's something that normally we cannot uh, analyze in a CGE or what is happening in, uh, for uh, specific vulnerable groups. And also something that we think that is interesting is to explore also the trade-off between efficiency and equity. Efficiency is because it's one of the main outputs of uh, the CG models and through all this incorporation of household data, we can also see what is happening in terms of the equity. And if there is uh, this trade-off between equity and efficiency in the 
in the climate policies that we can analyze, and also if we if this trade-off can be can be solved. So also the this is more technical that the the recursive calibration that we have done between the micro data or the micro model and the macro model the CGE. It also allows to, to introduce a better representation of the, the consumer behavior because normally, as probably many of you know, uh, in a regular CDE, normally the demand is uh, follow a, a set function. So through this process, where as as you have a different micro or demand model, you can also have like that uh, that better behavior with uh, other kind of models, like for example, almost ideal demand system or other demand model that, that again, capture uh, better the behavior of the household. And also, for example, other idea that we think that is interesting from this kind of uh, approaches is to explore, for example, the, 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 the household behavior or the inequality in different climate pathways, no, which is the role that inequality will play uh, if the inequality is different, are the emissions also different, and, and so on and so on. So, this is pretty much the summary that we have uh, for Sans. Again, as I said, this is a, a, a work in progress model. So we are open also to, to disaggregate some of the regions or disaggregate some of the sectors, and we are working and trying to, to improve also the, all of that.